Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Hey friends, welcome to Worldview Matters. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're gonna talk about uh, prophecy today, talk about Israel, talk about uh, how some uh, reacted to the election results. And I'm blessed to bring in Mondo Gonzalez, and he's with Prophe- Prophecy Watchers. He's got a great podcast this week in Bible Prophecy. And um, yeah, prophecywatchers.com. Mondo, thanks for taking the time with us today. It's always good to be here. Yep. So before we jump into some of the articles and topics and just fun things to talk about, tell us where you're at. Doesn't, that doesn't look like your studio or your office there. Uh, and you got a big so smile on I, your face. Something about your daughter or what? Yes, my, my daughter, my youngest daughter, is getting married uh, tomorrow. So we are out here uh, to see her married off, which is good. Good good guy she's getting married to, so we're happy about it. Oh, good. As long as, as, long as he's a good guy, he's a believer. And uh, uh, yes. we'll, we'll pray that you make it back safely from the left coast. Um, so you did a program. By the way, I want to, t- I want to tell people about uh, the Psalm 19 project again. Um, which we talked about, I think, last time when you were on, maybe the time before, just phenomenal photography. And ju- there's just some great information on there about astronomy and things like that. So make sure to check that out. Um, so you did a program, also Gary also did on uh, Prophecy Watchers, with Steve Quayle. And this is one of those topics I was watching, I'm going, okay, I'm trying to follow, and, and just some of the topics get into stuff that's can not exactly in the Bible, but when it, you're talking about the atmosphere, the earth and the universe or, you know, stars. So tell us about what was the top, uh, one of the topics. Well, Steve uh, talked with Gary on mysterious orbs and portals, but I saw the program that you did with him, the interview that you did with him. I don't have it in front of me. I don't know what the title of that one was. Mondo, tell us about that. And uh, I know you're into you know, astronomy and the, the stars and all that. So that must have been interesting to you. Um, so for people that don't keep up with that and hear that and go, oh, do, 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 you know, <laughs> tell us about tell us about that. This is this is the uh, the fun part of, of what we do in the sense of, as we know, that the Bible speaks about many things, but it doesn't speak about all things. And it and we do know that, again, the Bible gives us a framework that we are operating uh, in a supernatural world, that there is an unseen realm uh, behind the, the veil. Uh, the Bible's complete with uh, instances of that. So again, we we believe it, that this is. I'll just say it this way: oftentimes, even as a pastor, as Christians, we read in the Bible about Jesus interacting again, casting out demons, or just Daniel chapter ten, the unseen realm. But we tend to think that those supernatural elements are only on the pages of the Bible, that we don't look out in our current world and think, oh, is that really true? Well, of course it's true. Those things haven't gone away. Uh, Satan hasn't gone on vacation. The fallen angels have not gone on vacation. There is a kingdom of darkness that is still there behind the scenes uh, operating and going towards this goal that we understand as being the end of the age when the dragon, you know, gives all of his power to a certain figure. So I just encourage Christians to always keep an open mind to some of these things. Uh, That doesn't mean we have the answers to everything. And one of the things that Steve Quayle has done is uh, he likes to, to, uh, what's the phrase in the sense of take it to the limit. And so (laughs) in the sense of the take the envelope all the way to the edge. And so one of the things that he did in his recent DVD was talking about these these evidences that we see in the sky with poor, orbs and spirals and other things and uh he was seeing them as possibly being portals that were opened up for you know demonic entities or other things and so you know i think it's it's a fascinating thing to to explore and and to discover and really just to just like could this be true yeah so we're going to talk about Israel in a minute and uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, his response to President Trump winning the election. Um, and, and I want to get your take on that. But um, we've talked a little bit about this before. Wh- how do you look at it, Mondo? Because you're fascinated by this as well. UFOs, you know, I've heard, you know, demonic spirits. You know, we hear all kinds of different things. 
Um, in other words, not just poo-pooing them all together. So what, what's your take on that? Because, I mean, portals, or, that's just like, okay, um, <laughs> that's hard for me to jump to. But what about UFOs? Yes, let's make a distinction there. That's hard for me to jump to as well. But <laughs> if, when we think about UFOs, that, that that's not hard at all. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt what we've seen from 2017 on uh, with this disclosure. I mean, our government's having meetings about it. They're having another one coming up here soon too as well. But they're, they're, they're creating these, these uh, programs, these administrations, these offices in order to ATIP and others, in order to communicate with each other. So this is way beyond, uh, you know, tinfoil hat stuff. Uh, when our governments get involved, the, the evidence is overwhelming that there's something there. Now, what what I've seen, at least in, in all the things, is uh, at least publicly and even biblically, we don't know exactly what they are. Uh, they seem to have a sinister mentality behind them. That's for sure. But the fact of the matter is, it's undeniable what's there. And there's a there's a mysterious uh, idea to it. And as I just mentioned, we shouldn't be surprised by this because we know that there's other characters, real beings, powerful beings that are operating in the unseen realm behind. Mm. Um, so in, in that in that aspect, as we look prophetically, I was I was talking to somebody the other day and I thought, you know, let, let's fast forward 100 years or 500 years and we're sitting in the millennium. There, there's Jesus ruling and reigning on Earth. And we're sitting there. We're going, well, that's kind of weird, you know. Why didn't the UFO phenomenon have any part to play in any of that? That's awfully odd that all the years of that, and it really didn't play anything. I, I don't think we're going to be saying that. Huh. Interesting. It's, it's another area, of, uh, just a fascinating area to look at and try to get some information, balanced information, and not take it too far by making Great. assumptions, you know, with the Bible. But um yeah, I mean, the spirit realm is very real. If we could only see, uh, we get little hints of it in uh, the Old Testament and Daniel. We get revelation. Um, what well, Ephesians 6, you know, forces of yes. darkness. I mean, the the spiritual, you know, wickedness in it, high places. So, Mondo, let's talk about Benjamin Netanyahu now and um, his response to Donald Trump winning the election. Um First of all, one of the things, the subtitles I was going to talk about today as far as the podcast with you, how does President Trump's victory impact Israel geopolitics? But let's uh, talk about his reaction. He said it was a huge victory. And there's an article that says Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu among first world leaders to congratulate Donald Trump on victory. So I would imagine, and I'll let you chime in, there's a little bit of relief from Israel um, due to this election, your thoughts? Oh, a hundred percent. You know, the what you see in American Israeli politics goes back, of course, a long ways. As we know, you know, a lot of the peace agreements have been um, initiated and finalized by U.S. presidents. So, what you it, and the latest round, I, I think, goes back to the Obama administration. There's no doubt Obama was one of the most anti Israel. Uh, presidents ever and he had yes. we had eight years of that and then if you tag on biden adding another four years of that same uh type of policy there's no doubt there as we see even even in israel 60 70 percent of israelis want would want a trump to be voted in rather than uh, kamala so i think netanyahu let's remember he is the longest serving prime minister ever in the history uh, in israel and he also is a politician. He's a very good politician. And so he he there was a lot of rejoicing when Trump won. And so, as you would expect, being a good politician, one of the first people to call and congratulate Trump. No surprise there. So what you saw and, and uh, what, what you would have seen in the, as it relates to Kamala or Trump, 100 percent night and day difference. Now, uh, what's going to be interesting is we have the next few months or at least November, December, um, will th the current Biden in his administration do similar things to what Obama did in his last couple months in office, which was very uh, betrayal. It betrayed Israel several times, uh, of UN Resolution 234. I mean, it, it was it was horrible what Obama did in his final hours to Israel. Will, will Biden do the same thing? And will it be such that it can't be undone? Yeah. That... I'm watching that carefully. 
Yeah, will Biden do the same thing? We know it's not Biden. It's those behind yep. Biden in the deep state, which is probably Obama, Pelosi, you know, and everybody else. But the statement says that Trump and Netanyahu agreed to work together for Israel's security. And they also discussed the Iranian threat. Yeah. And uh, this was hours after the Palestinian terrorist group Hamas said Trump's incoming administration in January must work seriously to stop the war. What do you think about that, Mondo? I, that's fascinating to me as well. Well, I, I think the there's no doubt Hamas wants to remain in existence. And you know what? <laughs> Netanyahu will not have it. He, he wouldn't have it even with the current Biden administration. So I think there's no doubt Trump's uh, comments that he's made over the past year has been very clear. Uh, number one, Trump is very uh, wise to the Iran situation. Uh, mm -hmm. in, enough to pull us out of the deal and everything else. So yep. we know he's 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 been on that. He's not he's not foolish. The second thing, though, there's no doubt that Trump has come out and said, "Listen, uh, Israel needs to get this done and get it done quickly, clean it up, so that we can then look forward to coming to some sort of understanding of what a peace agreement might look like." So I do think that um, based on Trump's comments, he's going to give a little bit more of a freer hand. But I don't think his patience will last that long, honestly, because mm. he's been operating on a platform of not having war, not promoting war. And so I think he's going to feel committed, certainly to Israel, no doubt, but also to have it done quick. Because as, let's remember, and, and Trump did this in his first administration, uh, presidents, politicians, they want a legacy. And how many presidents in the last 50, 60, 70 years have wanted the legacy of being the one that finalized a peace treaty in the Middle East. Trump mm. is no different. We saw that with his deal of the century plan going back. And of course, I think there's a little bit of naive thinking a lot on these presidents because they don't understand Middle Eastern history and the religious situation and even prophetically. So what's what are your thoughts on, um, I think Netanyahu and Israel kind of wised up after a while and they stopped listening to Biden and the Democrats and whoever's, you know, behind uh, the White House. Um, and so they've been making more progress in that amount of time when they stopped listening to America, sadly. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because I know, hopefully, Lord willing, that's going to all shift come January 20 when uh, the Trump administration takes over. Yeah, I think what there, there's been there's been a couple things that I think contribute to that. Uh, one of them is if we think about Netanyahu, Netanyahu stopped listening primarily. Of course, he has an existential threat. That's, that's he's got to do it no matter what. But as the election came to be closer, he stopped listening more because he knew that there was a potential window that he had. Because imagine if Kamala would have got elected, he knew I got to get this done because Kamala couldn't really be who she was told to be by, like, as we mentioned, by the powers playing the strings because of their need for the Jewish electorate. So I think Netanyahu, again, being very savvy, realized that, number one, I have the existential threat. But secondly, I have a window now. I'm going to stop listening, do everything I can in this window. I think now it'll be interesting, again, going back, will he, uh, how will he handle this two month or, you know, basically till January 20th, a two month window when there's the potential for, again, the Biden administration to completely stab them in the back? Will yeah. he try, will he try to be careful and not provoking them and just wait till January? In my opinion, I think as a, as a politician, he probably is going to wait. I don't think he's going to try to push the envelope for the next two months in order to aggravate and to potentially bring something that might he might that might bite him in the butt when all he has to wait is till the 20th of January. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating how this is playing out. It's really interesting. Uh, by the way, friends, we're with Mondo Gonzalez, prophecywatchers.com. Uh, one more uh, quote, and then we'll uh, take a brief pause here. Um, according to another news outlet, tension between Washington, meaning the White House, and Tel Aviv has ridden sharp, risen sharply over the last year, with President Biden and others criticizing Israel's tactics in its multi-front war with Iranian-backed groups in the Middle East. And Netanyahu said, quote, 
your speaking to Trump, your historic return to the White House offers a new beginning for America and a powerful recommitment to the great alliance between Israel and America, end quote. So when we come back with Mondo Gonzalez, we're talking about how important is it for not only America, but Christians and those who uphold the biblical worldview to support and pray for Israel. We'll be right back on Worldview Matters. Introducing Patriot Mobile, the wireless carrier that stands with you. We are committed to supporting the values that make our nation great. With affordable plans and reliable nationwide coverage, Patriot Mobile is not just a wireless service. It's a call to action for those who believe in the American dream. Get free activation now with promo code David. Friends, be sure to follow us on Rumble if you're on that platform. Uh, We're getting a lot of followers, and we're so thankful to God and to you. Also, you can download the free Freedom Project Media app on your iPhone. Uh, Mondo Gonzalez, by the way, the program I was referring to at the top with Steve Quayle that you did is called Have the Gates of Hell Been Opened? (laughs) Mondo, you talk about you're trying to be really, you know, it's like, wow, let's let's that's an attention getter. Right. A little provocative. Uh, but but it was a really interesting interview. And so you guys can watch it. Um, it's uh, pro, it's actually off over on the um, you got it linked on the home page. But anyway, where are you going? You said you're going to Europe soon uh, for a conference. What are you going to be doing over there? Yes, we, we leave um, here in the middle of November. We're going to be heading, I'm going to go in with Billy Crone, Brandon Holhouse, Ken Michael. Uh, Troublemakers. Patrick, will be there. We're, we're going, we're, we're starting in Scotland. And so we're going to be doing a, a conference, a prophecy conference there. And then we're going to be going to Switzerland, Bern, Switzerland, uh, to be doing a prophecy conference there. And then finally to Northern Ireland. And as we know, Europe is very post-Christian. So We've had uh, the opportunity to help start Bible studies and other home groups, knowing that our brothers and sisters around the world in these places, often the churches don't talk prophecy. So they're very desperate to, for fellowship with one another and also just to feel loved. I mean, we, we, we love our brothers and sisters around the world, and they don't often get uh, people coming out to, to love on them and, and just to help them know that we're in this together as we look for the soon return of Jesus. And so people can check it out at... Uh, either prophecywatchers.com under events, uh, they can see there. And if you, look, if people know they have friends or family in these places, have them go sign up. The, the, mm-hmm. You can go to, to our site or getalifemedia.com, which is Billy's site. Uh, scroll all the way down to his calendar and uh, people can sign up. It's free. All the conferences are free. So we want to see them well attended because we want to see, again, God continue to move. So also, we want to go on record and be one of the first to wish you a very Merry Christmas, everybody, and uh, talk about this conference you're going to be doing in Branson, and it's, uh, let's see, December 5th through the 8th. Um, my goodness, I mean, Alex Newman, just talked to him last week. We've got Billy Crone. You're going to be there, Gary Stearman, Josh Peck. Tell us about this, and people can just get info at, the, at your homepage, right? Prophecywatchers.com? Absolutely, yeah. We have... We have 22 speakers joining us for this weekend. Wow. <laughs> um, it's 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 actually, I mean, these are all everybody's favorites. And you know, Prophecy Watchers. You know, I've been here for three years, but uh, it, it is well, it is known for the the mega conferences. So that uh, we're going to have again so many speakers. We're going to have you know double that the messages. And the fascinating thing that we're seeing this already is. Uh, we know now who's going to be the next tr- president. Yes, uh, at least Lord willing, right? And um, but so the people, the, the speakers are going to be talking about the prophetic developments of what that looks like. Again, all of us, we recognize that nobody believes that Trump is the savior. That's Jesus Christ. We know that. Yeah. That's obvious. But there's no doubt that, that this new administration is going to change things uh, prophetically, no doubt, and how the, the United States interacts with globalism, uh, castle systems, digital currencies, everything else. Every administration changes that. And so we're going to be talking about all those things and more. 
Amen, brother. That sounds exciting. Christmas in Branson, December 5th through the 8th. I'm looking at the list of the usual culprits, and they've been, most of them have been on Worldview Matters. I, I love it. J.B. Hickson, Brandon Holthaus, uh, let's see, uh, Bill Koenig, Terry James, Ken Michael, uh, Lee Brainerd, uh, you, of course, uh, Alex Newman. What a lineup, man. So, guys, go to prophecywatchers.com right there on the home page. So, Mondo. I got this from another friend of ours, uh, Cheryl Chumley, Washington Times uh, journalist, and she she made Israel's top 50 Christian allies list. I don't know if you're familiar with this list, but um, evangelist Franklin Graham, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, uh, there's a Texas pastor on there, Larry Hutch, and they were among the top pro-Israel leaders named, and Patricia Heaton is on there. Remember her from Everybody Loves Raymond? She's a very outspoken pro-life um, actri- actress and activist for the life um, life in the mother's womb. Uh, but Cheryl Trumley was recognized, and I would just want to mention this and then get your take on leaders supporting Israel because we don't have enough in the United States. But they noted that um, Cheryl Trumley, among others, have been particularly vocal in their faith-based advocacy since Hamas terrorists attacked Israel October 7, 2023. It cited Chumley's contributions to discussions on political and social issues across various platforms. And she went, of course, to visit Israel. Um, She's a supporter of Israel, as most of us uh, hopefully are. So, Mondo, just speak to that for a moment. I think there's been some false teachings in the church, um, replacement uh, theology, and so many other things that have caused problems within the Christian church in America. So talk to the importance uh, of that. You know, this to me is close to my heart. I mean, my my undergrad degree is in Jewish studies because I, I really felt strongly that I needed to understand the Jewish frame of reference for the Bible, obviously to understand the Bible. And, uh, you know, I, I in my own mind, if Jesus was Chinese, I would have taken Chinese studies, right? But the fact is, Jesus was born in a Jewish family. He, yeah. he's, he's, he's still Jewish today. He's, he's still a man. <laughs> he's still Jewish. And yeah. so I think this is an extremely important topic. It's one of the things I'm going to discuss, not only in Europe, but also at our, our conference in uh, Branson, is I think this is one of the most confusing and misunderstood balanced approaches to how does a Christian, uh, how do we support Israel? Why should we support Israel? And so I think I'll just say this, that um, the Bible has a lot to say now about supporting Israel. At at the end of the day, I ask the, the questions, does Israel belong in the land? And the answer is unequivocally yes. God made promises to Israel, uh, primarily to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so those promises will always be fulfilled. And then he has a covenant that the land is, is, is God's land, but he's giving it to them. The second question I ask is, well, does Israel deserve to be in the land? And I think, well, God answers that in Deuteronomy 9. Of course, Israel doesn't deserve to be in the land ever because they're, they're, he calls them stubborn and <laughs> stiff-necked. But, so what, what it helps us to understand is, look, we don't need to support everything that the state of Israel does today. Of course right. not. No government's perfect in any way. Right. But what we do have our obligation to do is to recognize that, no, God gave that land to them, and they have a right to be there, and that is based on God's promises, which he will never uh, revoke. So that's important for us. And then to navigate the waters of what that means to support Israel's right to be there, but also not to support every last thing that they do. Of course, Christian balance is the key here. Yes, and they're a secular nation, um, you know, and there are Messianic Jews, but that's a great perspective. I, you said balance, Christian balance. So I know we only we have under four minutes left in this podcast. I know you've done programs on this. Well, I've asked other guests, how do we reach the church in America and undo this wrong thinking um, about Israel? I think that um, I, th- a lot of this has come to my plate, and I wrote about this in, 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 the red, in my Red Heifer book, because what you do have is, again, you have two extremes. You have this side over here. All they do is focus on the, the, er- the errors of the modern state of Israel. OK, and, and of course, again, looking at any government, you can point out the errors. So what happens is people gravitate toward those errors and they think, well, that's not godly. Look at the way that 
uh, the, the secular Israeli government treats Messianic Jews or treats Christians, or etc. And then you have the other side, which is Israel can do no wrong. And so you think, okay, let's come to the middle. And I think if we approach it in a way that's balanced, we will actually not 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 only honor the Lord, but I think we will be more persuasive in our conversations that we're not turning a blind eye to some of the things that are imperfect, that Israel is there in unbelief. But we knew that. Ezekiel 36 tells us that they would be regathered into the land in unbelief and that their salvation, their spiritual national salvation, Romans 11, 26, would come at a future time. So I think if we if we stay biblically, no surprise, I think that we will, in balance, we're truth tellers. I think we will be much more successful in helping people see the, the true theology of God's promises to Israel. Yes, and if you're a newer Christian, younger believer, you've got to do a study on Romans 9, 10, and 11. Um, so you mentioned the Red Heifer Ritual book. We talked about that last time you were on. It could have been the time before. I lose track, but there's also a DVD available, and that's at prophecywatchers.com. You can go to the store, the Red Heifer Ritual by Mondo Gonzalez, and uh, also the um, DVD, Randall Price as well. Um, so we can watch you on Daystar Sundays, 10.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, Tell us about the uh, this week in the week in Bible prophecy podcast. I see you're I know you're on YouTube. Where else can people watch and listen to that? Yeah. If, if people go to prophecywatchers.com and find on the tab where to find us, we are all over the place, uh, which is television, you know, internet, of course, magazine. But our the week in Bible prophecy.com, uh, we just do a weekly podcast, kind of giving what's happening around the world, current events, trying to keep people updated. As you know. It's, it's almost impossible to, to handle everything right now. As we're approaching the end of the age, everything's converging. And uh, there's no lack of, of things to discuss to show that prophecy is coming true. Amen, brother. Thank you for all you do. Um, just such a blessing since we connected. Even before that, when I was watching you guys, I love some of the interviews you do, and uh, just a lot of great information. The church needs to be equipped. The pastors generally are not doing a great job at that. There are some great pastors but uh, too many of them are not. So I'm so thankful for ministries like yours and uh, others that uh, we get to rub elbows with, that you get to go do conferences with those speakers. And, th and Christmas in Branson, man, I wish I could get away for that. It just sounds wonderful. By the way, there's going to be a DVD after the conference, right, that people can order? Yeah, I mean, people, even if they can't show up in person, they can do live stream. But then, of course, all the DVDs will be available afterwards of every everything and more. We always awesome. like to add extra bonuses in there. Awesome. Um, not going to put any pressure on, but w will you get that uh, up before Christmas and available? <laughs> probably <laughs> oh, not. Probably That's, not. Not the DVDs, but the live stream will be available. Yes. Great. ASAP. Great. Mondo Gonzalez, brother, thank you. God bless you. Uh, safe travels back from the left coast. And um, congratulations on uh, your daughter's wedding. Well, thank you so much. And hey, thank you for all the great work you're doing. I mean, I'll turn it right back on you. You're doing a great work. Praise God, I get to talk to some great people. So thanks, brother. Talk to you soon. All right, guys, uh, thanks again for tuning in, for sharing the podcast. God bless you, and as always, keep speaking the truth about things that matter.